When it comes to the expansion draft coming up this summer, the Seattle Kraken will be picking mostly from teams' third and fourth lines, as well as second pair defensemen. And while it is very doable to make a competitive team by doing so, as Vegas showed just a few years ago, it is also very fair to ask, as people did right after Vegas' expansion draft, where are the points going to come from? Who are the star players, or at the very least, the legitimate first line NHL talents? Well, for Seattle at least, that's where teams like the Tampa Bay Lightning come in. By the way, if you do find yourself enjoying this video at any point and you like to do that kind of thing, the subscribe button down there could probably help you out. Now, to be fair, when it comes to difference making players or potential stars the Kraken could have in their first couple of years, those guys might be more likely to come to them via free agency, especially in a year like this one. But the Lightning are coming off of a couple of years where they won the Stanley Cup in 2020, and the year before, all they did was tie a record for most wins in a season. And that did not happen by mistake. Because this team is absolutely loaded with talent and it runs very deep, as even their third line guys that are at that level the Kraken will be picking from, many of them could very easily be first line level players on other teams across the league, as they showed with their play in the 2020 playoffs on the run to that Stanley Cup victory. And it's not just on the forward end, as they do have pretty good depth on the defensive end as well, including a couple of younger guys that could tempt them into going the 4-4 protection route. But, at least right now anyway, I do think that it's actually more likely that they probably stick with the 7-3 route instead. So then as we start with the protection list on the forward end, regardless of which route they end up going, both Nikita Kucherov and Steven Stamkos would have to be protected because of their no movement clauses. Though, even without them, I think they're pretty likely to end up being protected anyway. And then, even if the Lightning were to go with protecting just four forwards, I think both Braden Point and Anthony Sorelli are also pretty likely to end up protected, and are certainly locks in the event that they go the 7-3 route. And then again, for the Lightning, especially on the forward end, it is a bit of an embarrassment of riches, so there are any number of guys that could fill some of these last three spots. But at least as things stand right now, I think that two of them are pretty likely to go to Yanni Gord and Andre Pilat. Then with that final spot maybe being a little bit more up in the air, but at least right now, I think Alex Kalorn probably has the inside track to getting it. Now, obviously, this does leave a few pretty good players left exposed, including a number of younger guys that do look like promising pieces of the Lightning's potential future. So feel free to disagree with me in the comment section on this protection list. But this is keeping in mind that the Lightning are very much in win now mode and would like to keep this core together as much as they can in order to do so, which does mean that they're less likely to prioritize protecting their youth as maybe some of the other teams that we've talked about so far. Meanwhile, on the defensive end, Victor Hedman also has no movement clause, so he would have to be protected. Though, I'm not sure it really matters one way or another, as he would be protected with or without it. And then Mikhail Sergachev is also a lock to be protected here. So then the question just becomes, who do they protect with that third spot, and do they consider potentially protecting four defensemen and leaving themselves a little bit more exposed on the forward end? But at least for now, assuming they do protect just the three defensemen, which again I think is a little bit more likely at this point, I think that spot probably goes to Eric Chernak. And then in goal, well, there's no point in wasting any time here. Andre Vasilevsky is definitely getting that spot. Now, going back to the defenseman for just a second, yes, protecting Chernak in that third spot would leave both Cal Foote and Ryan McDonough exposed, and especially considering the lack of prospect depth that they have on the defensive end versus the forward end, they could again potentially go the 4-4 protection route in order to protect a guy like McDonough or Foote, even with the somewhat disappointing year that Foote has had so far. But as we do now start looking at some of the players that could be available for the Kraken to select from, if they were to go that route of protecting either McDonough or Foote with a fourth protection slot on the defensive end, that would leave guys like Yanni Gord, Alex Kalorn, and Andre Pilat exposed on the offensive end, any one of whom the Kraken would take all too happily. Now, yes, sure, all three of those guys are right around 30 years old, and again, this team does have quite a bit more depth on the forward end when it comes to young prospect-level talent that could step up into one of those roles if one of them were to be selected. This team is, again, not to sound like a broken record, in win-now mode, and all three of them are important pieces of this core that's trying to win cups. Especially Pilat, who probably to me would be the Kraken's pick if he was exposed in this scenario. Though the Kraken would also probably have a hard time saying no to Yanni Gord as their first-line center as well. 
Now, even with a 7-3 protection list, there is a chance that Alex Kalorn could end up off of it. And if that does prove to be the case, he probably would be the best forward option for the Kraken here. The 29-year-old has played in 633 career games across 9 NHL seasons, where he has 338 points on 143 goals and 195 assists. So he is, over the course of his career, better than a half a point per game player, and is usually good for somewhere in the mid to high teens in goals over the course of a season, but is coming off of easily his best season where he had 26 goals with 49 points across 68 games. And if you're into shooting percentage, he did very well there last year with a 20%. But even outside of points production, he plays a pretty strong two-way game with a decent amount of physicality for a forward and pretty strong looking possession metrics, even though some of that could probably be explained by the team he's on where quite a bit of these guys look good in that category. But even with that said, being pretty safely above 50% in Corsi 4 percentage in every year he's been in the league outside of his rookie season is still the mark of a pretty good two-way player. So all in all, Kalorn is a very solid player and would be a very good pickup for the Kraken if he were to be available. Even if, even with an expanded role with Seattle, he probably wouldn't be quite a star level player or likely to turn into one in Seattle. But he still would be a very good top 6 level forward for the Kraken early on. But even with Kalorn potentially protected, there still are a number of good forward options for the Kraken to select from here one of whom who even could have some pretty good star level talent potentially down the road with an expanded role in Seattle would be Matthew Joseph. Looking impressive at both the QMJHL and AHL levels after having been drafted in the fourth round of the 2015 draft, the now 24 year old has already gotten a decent amount of experience at the NHL level, having played in 155 games across three NHL seasons where he has 51 points on 29 goals and 22 assists. Now granted, right off the bat, a point in every third game doesn't seem all that impressive, but most of that is due to the just 7 points that he had in 37 games last year, which was coming off of a much more impressive rookie season where he had 26 points in 70 games, all while playing just over 11 minutes per game. And now this year, coming off of that disappointing performance last year, even with less than 11 minutes of ice time per game, he has 12 goals and 18 points in the 48 games that he's played. Which certainly is a promising bounce back, and with the points production this season, he's also brought back that physical aspect of his game that he showed in his rookie year where he had nearly 130 hits, now this year having 70 in 48 games. And granted, his possession stats don't really look all that impressive, especially considering the team he's on, but again, with the amount of ice time he's getting and playing mostly on a fourth line, he probably isn't going to get a whole lot of chance to move the needle there very much with the role that he's playing on the Lightning. Now granted, even with the promising potential that this young forward would potentially seem to have, he might seem like a bit of a reach of a pick from a team like the Lightning who are going to be offering some more proven NHL talent when it comes to their exposure list. But for one, I would very much be interested to see what he could do with a little bit more of an expanded role this early on in his career, which he's just not going to get with the Lightning with the guys that he has ahead of him on the forward end there. On top of that though, and probably more importantly, the one big upside that he has here is that he also has a contract that goes through the 2022 season where at the end of it, he is also set to be an RFA, which would give the Kraken a little bit more control when it comes to re-signing him if he were to play for them. With that being said, the Lightning do have at least a couple of guys that probably would be a little bit more tempting of options than Matthew on the forward end if they had contracts that went through next season. Such players being Blake Coleman and Barclay Goutreau, who are both set to be UFAs at the end of the season. But when it comes to these two guys, well, in the past with some of the other videos in the series, I have been a little bit more willing to look at guys without contracts for next year just yet, knowing that a lot of those guys probably will get extensions. When it comes to the Lightning, they do have a big problem when it comes to cap space. So I'm just not sure that either one of these guys are going to be seeing new contracts before the expansion draft at the very least, and most likely will probably be hitting the free agency market where the Kraken can then pick them up if they want them there. And then of course there's a number of young soon-to-be RFA options that could also come into play like Mitchell Stevens, Boris Kachuk, or Taylor Radish. Moving over now to the defensive end though, where again, Chernak's impressive 2021 season so far probably has him getting the third protection slot that would leave again Ryan McDonough available for the Kraken to pick. 
And if in fact Kalorn ends up getting the seventh protection slot on the forward end and then neither Coleman or Goudreau end up seeing new contracts, which then means pretty much all of the veterans that are signed for next season are protected outside of Patrick Maroon, then that would make McDonough probably the Kraken's best veteran option from the Lightning. Now nearly 32 years old, the former 2007 first round pick has played in 706 NHL games across 11 seasons, where he has 311 points on 67 career goals and 244 assists which is definitely pretty decent points production from a defenseman and has seen Norris votes in a number of seasons throughout his career, even if he's never gotten particularly close to actually winning it. But even with that, again, respectable points production on the forward end for a defenseman, even if it has dropped off significantly over the last couple of years. On the defensive end, he also has been impressive there over the course of his career, with nearly 1,400 block shots in his 11 seasons which is good for nearly two block shots per game. And granted, his career possession metrics are nothing all that special, but still, he is a very solid two-way defenseman and has been throughout the course of his career, even if over the last few years, whether it's block shots, points production, or even hits, although those have picked up this year, he has started to slow down in the last couple of seasons a little bit. But even with that said, and also considering the fact that this expansion draft will offer more in the way of solid defensemen than it will forwards, he would offer the Kraken a very strong veteran presence when it comes to their first or maybe a little bit more likely second pair defense, with also the potential of some scoring upside if he can get some of that points production back that he's lost in Tampa Bay over the last couple of years. Of course, on the defensive end, the other option, if the Kraken for some reason wanted to go the potentially promising young prospect level of defenseman when it comes to the Lightning, then Cal Foote would probably be the pick here. But with that said, the 22-year-old defenseman has had a bit of a disappointing rookie season, having just three points in 34 games at the NHL level this year which considering the points production he was able to show at the AHL level over the last couple of seasons, I think it's safe to say the Lightning were expecting a little bit more in his first season at the NHL level, and it's probably why I think he's a little bit less likely to end up getting protected, where coming into the year, it might have seemed pretty likely that they would try to protect him one way or another. And yes, granted, he could still very well turn into the star at the NHL level that he was drafted to be. But at this point, he would be a little bit more of a risky pick for the Kraken to take, which, especially from a defenseman, I just don't think is worth it when it comes to a team like the Lightning, who are going to be offering some more proven talent, especially on the forward end where it's going to be harder to find, at least in the expansion draft. Of course, the other option for the Kraken here that's not only possible, but potentially even likely to happen with Tampa Bay is the fact that the Lightning could cut a side deal or try to make a trade with Seattle when it comes to the expansion draft. And that's because, especially with the flat cap this next season, the Lightning are not just up against the cap, but well over it, and are needing to find some space in order to make room for their team to be under the cap next season. Fortunately for the Lightning, the expansion draft does actually offer them the opportunity to get rid of one of those contracts that they need to find a way to part with before next season. However, if they were to not make a deal with Seattle and they were to pick a guy like Joseph who's going to be worth under a million dollars next season, then that would really put the Lightning in a much tighter spot. So there is quite a bit of incentive here for them to make a deal with Seattle. And that is where a guy like Spokane's own Tyler Johnson comes in. Now Johnson over the last couple of years has been offering a little bit in diminished returns when it comes to points production from what the Lightning were expecting when they signed him to the deal that sees him earning $5 million per year through the 2024 season. And they've already tried to tempt the rest of the NHL into taking his contract by putting him on waivers at the end of last season season, so they definitely do look ready to move on from him if they can find a way to do so, which Seattle now offers the opportunity to potentially do. And as I don't think that it's terribly unlikely that Johnson ends up back in his home state playing for the Kraken via trade in this expansion draft, I thought that we might take a look at him here. The 30-year-old center has played in 581 career games across 9 NHL seasons, where he has 358 points on 160 goals and 198 assists. He got off to a strong start in his career with a 50-point rookie season in 2013-14 that saw him get a trip to the All-Star game as well as finish third in the Calder voting, and then followed that up with 72 points in 77 games the following year. And although that was, at least to this point anyway, by far his best season from a points production standpoint, 
Throughout the next few years, he again remained somewhere in the 40 to 50 points range up until these last couple of seasons where he has again fallen off a little bit with 31 points in 65 games last year and now just 19 points in 47 games this season. Though it is fair to mention that that diminished amount of points production in the last couple of seasons has come partially due to a diminished role on the team and definitely less time on ice, as some other talent at the center position has kind of passed Johnson by on the Lightning. But even with that diminished role and diminished playtime, he still has been able to maintain pretty respectable possession stats when it comes to Corsi 4 percentage and even expected plus minus. Now yes, with him going to be turning 31 before the start of next season and still having three years on that contract, especially with the flat cap probably maintaining over the next couple seasons at the very least, he probably isn't quite worth a $5 million a year type of player. But even if he isn't the all-star level player that he was early on in his career, he certainly isn't a bad NHL player by any means either. And if there is one team in the NHL that could afford to take on one not ideal looking contract, it is the Kraken as they have plenty of cap space to be playing with coming into this season. And this situation with the Lightning and Johnson is all too perfect of a situation for the Kraken not to take advantage of and potentially get some pretty good return on top of getting a player that they can actually use in Johnson. Now with that having been said, I would love to be a fly on the wall for the conversation between Ron Francis and the Lightning when it comes to potentially setting up a trade here because when it comes to draft picks as a potential return for the Kraken, the Lightning don't have a whole lot to offer there unless they really want some seventh round picks. Which then pretty much just leaves prospects as a potential return for the Kraken for taking on that contract. And especially considering the Lightning aren't going to be wanting to retain any of that contract, and the fact that the Kraken could have some pretty good other options if they decided not to make a deal, the Lightning are probably going to have to do some convincing and offering a couple of pretty good deals for the Kraken to potentially take here. And as far as which prospect or prospects the Kraken could potentially get in return from the Lightning, well, that's pretty hard to narrow down without pretty much just guessing at this point. Really, the only close to guarantee that I could potentially see here is that it would likely be forwards that the Kraken would get, as that is where the Lightning have the most young depth. So ultimately, when it comes down to it with the Lightning, there still is quite a bit that's still up in the air here. They could very easily still go the 4-4 protection route, in which case without a trade, Seattle could very much look at just taking Yanni Gord or Andre Palat, which then would probably incentivize the Lightning to even then look at potentially making a trade in order to not lose one of those guys. But even with the 7-3 protection route, a trade is probably still the best option for the Lightning and a good option for the Kraken. And while ultimately even if Tyler Johnson isn't the best player that the Kraken could potentially get from the Lightning, if he were to come back to Washington with a prospect or two from Tampa Bay, that's probably a trade worth looking at. Especially considering he still probably would be a better player than some of the other guys they would get from lesser teams. And even if his contract isn't ideal, it's one that Seattle can definitely work around at this point. With that said though, we have reached the end of this one, so if you have made it to this point, thank you very much for watching. If you did like or enjoy this video, there are buttons for that kind of stuff down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Tampa Bay Lightning, their potential protection lists, trade scenarios, or who you'd like to see the Kraken get from them down in the comment section. Otherwise, stay safe out there and be good to each other. Peace!